Did you di see the engraving on this? You're kidding di me. Di da della PM12 dorata. <laughs> that is wild. This past spring, I had the absolute honor of meeting Mr. Paulo Parola, a legendary engineer who, ironically, you may never have even heard of. Not only celebrated his 42 years in the company yesterday, but mainly uh, he was the designer and the inventor of such iconic model, uh, such as the ARR 7090, PM12, and mainly the most famous uh, P93, 93 pistol. Can you tell him that to us he's like a celebrity? Signore Paolo has been an engineer with Beretta for several decades, and he was the man behind a number of Beretta's most important designs, but perhaps his most underappreciated accomplishment would have been the design of the Beretta 93R. While I haven't been able to figure out the origin of the Beretta 93R from any sources, I've found researching it on the internet. Signore Paolo himself told me that in the 1970s, a Texas law enforcement agency specifically requested a full auto version of the Beretta 92. He's telling me that at that time they received the request from Dallas police. To have Dallas, a, Texas? To, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> to, 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 to have a full auto pistol. Signore Paolo got to work and designed the Beretta 93 Rafica. Rafica meaning burst. While it may seem that simply making a full auto Beretta 92 would be simple enough, I mean, you take a Beretta 92 and you make it full auto. It actually took some real thought to not only make it burst capable or full auto capable, but to make it good too. I've shot full auto pistols, the CZ-75, the Glock 18, but the Beretta 93R may be the best executed of the bunch. First of all, obviously, the gun had to be able to fire more than one round with more than one trigger press. Full auto, right? The 93 includes a selector switch and safety in the same place as the traditional 92, meaning that officers who are already used to the manual of arms with the Beretta 92 would be able to find and operate the selector switch without any additional training. The safety you have on off right here, and then you have a fire selector, one and three burst. So you can be in burst and have the safety on, you can be in single and have the safety on, and then flip it off. The gun was designed to fire a three round burst instead of just full auto by way of a plate that was behind one of the grip panels that I still kind of don't understand. Number of teeth of this component provide you the number of the rounds to be shot for any burst. After Recupero. three rounds, Recupero. It goes back to the first position. You know, it's closer to a watch mechanism rather than to a, yeah, yeah. a pistol mechanism. Signore Apollo actually showed it to me. He designed this plate to operate in such a way that the 93R would fire a controllable three-round burst instead of a difficult-to-manage full-auto string or instead of forcing the operator to slap the trigger if he wanted to send off a burst. What was the hardest part? The hardest part was to, first of all, um, synchronize the burst mode mechanism and uh, to make to concentrate all the elements into the the small space and mainly to integrate with the old 92 architecture so the original 92 architecture instead one firm controlled trigger press will send three rounds downrange where you want them to go instead of where they just kind of end up with a high cyclical rate machine pistol. The 93R, unlike the plain old 92, was also designed to use a single action only trigger pull, again increasing its accuracy and its controllability. With the firing mechanism design, the next piece of the puzzle was to figure out other implements that would make the gun more controllable, but without compromising concealability, portability. The Telltale 45 degree folding foregrip is one of those devices. The inclusion of this semi-vertical foregrip under the 93's dust cover increases the operator's ability to manage recoil with the support hand, although I can tell you that while the foregrip helps, it's actually not necessary to be successful with the Beretta 93. And an interesting design change included enlarging the trigger guard so that the user could either take a full beer can grip on the vertical foregrip, or he could hook his support thumb inside of the trigger guard if desired. 
Another helpful accessory was the clever stock that was included with the 93R. So as you see, the stock's pretty intuitive. You've got two holes here it mates up with, and then you've got this lever right here that goes into the lanyard loop. It's brilliant, but it's also a collapsing, folding stock too. So if you need to conceal it, say under a jacket, that's a lot easier to do. And I imagine this is going to be much more controllable in this configuration along with the angled foregrip. The stock is fixed with two points of contact. It's got a couple of holes in the grip that pins or studs in the stock kind of slide into. And this ingenious hook that clips into the existing lanyard loop already in the Breda 92 grip backstrap locking the stock into place. Once you've got the stock all hooked up, it can be unfolded and it provides a pretty sturdy and functional point of contact with the shooter's shoulder. As I said earlier, you don't necessarily need the VFG or the stock to get great accuracy with the 93R, but it helps a lot. And that's a good thing because the whole point of the Breda 93R was to be able to have something portable, holsterable. Now, you can fix the stock pretty quickly, but it's not instant. It takes time and it kind of defeats the purpose to just walk around with a stocked Beretta 92 in your holster. Okay then, so how do you make a small portable full auto machine pistol functional without affixing a butt stock and maybe not using a VFG? Well, the inclusion of a muzzle brake in addition to the single action trigger is another easy to implement measure that would reduce felt recoil by directing gases exiting the barrel upward to counter the rising force of recoil. Between the muzzle brake and the easy to control trigger, it helps this gun still be workable even without using the VFG or the stock as I demonstrate in this video. Now, before I shot one of the original Beretta 93Rs that was in Beretta's armory in uh, Gardone Valtrampia, Italy. This piece was created about in 1980s. Signore Paolo showed me how to operate it. He gave me and Ryan some advice. Take it, take it to the shoulder because the three rounds is very, very fast. <laughs> and we hit the range. When I spoke with Signore Paolo at the range, he told us that this was one of the original Beretta 93Rs that had countless rounds fired through it over the decades. He tweaked it a bit, lubed it for us, but he said its burst device was a little bit worn down after 40 years of use and abuse. So periodically it would actually stop at one or two rounds instead of engaging the full three round burst. We took the gun first to five yards because I wasn't very optimistic about the outcome. We're gonna go ahead and try shooting burst uh, from here at five meters. I'm gonna shoot a couple single and then we'll start ripping into it. All right. Whew, grip it and rip it. Dude. This is actually, it. it's functional. I thought I was going to Send a bunch into the ceiling. Where do you guys see this target? Come here, look at this. That's shooting burst at five meters. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the cyclical rate. It's not too fast. Uh, a lot of auto pistols, you're shooting faster than 1,000 rounds per minute, which is, of course, insane. But you've got the muzzle brake on here, and then you heard Mr. Paulo, the creator of this gun, say that the cyclical rate is only about 700 rounds per minute. What is the cyclical rate? Like, maybe 1,000, 1,200 rounds per minute? No, so we ask the technical of the velocity. is around 700. So we kept almost, we only had one shot. You know, I'm gonna give myself credit. <laughs> give myself credit for this one. No, we had just one shot out of the box here. So that to me is like, wow. I mean, that's incredible that, uh, that we did that. Let's do it again. And as you can see, I was totally wrong with the gun being far more accurate than I anticipated. We then tried shooting three round bursts into a head box at seven yards, no VFG, no butt stock. This is gonna be risky. We're gonna do headshots, but I might put one into Beretta ceiling and then they'll ask me to leave and I'll never be invited to Beretta Italy ever again, but we're gonna give it a shot anyways. All right, 
So, guys, this is shooting three round burst. This is shooting three round bursts at seven meters. All of the rounds inside the head box. Like, this is insane. This is actually a functional firearm in terms of using it in burst mode. Uh, wow, I, I mean, I am really impressed. I thought it was gonna be shots everywhere, like shots into the ceiling, but everything, oh my God, like a fist-sized group shooting full auto at seven meters. That's, that's insane. I mean, that's just crazy. As you can see, seven yards, 21 feet, no misses, even using a pistol firing three round burst. Amazing. It's seven meters, seven meters, right? Is that, is that different? In my mind, it's an absolute shame that Beretta no longer manufactures these pistols. I think they could actually sell a ton even on the US civilian market in a semi-auto only configuration. Think about how awesome a faux 93R could be, a, a 93 Rathoka, huh? Build it exactly like the original. Sure, you'd have to puss it up with a, like a fake selector that's semi-only in both configurations, but you could still sell them as SBRs on a Form 4 or sell them as pistols, then sell the stock and like the VFG as part of a, a kit separately to be installed by the end user on a Form 1 if you'd rather SBR it yourself. I mean, I don't know, like if they made a limited edition of like 500 or 1,000 of them, I think that'd be kind of cool. As a real treat, and to end this video, Ryan and I were allowed to handle Colonel Gaddafi's personal Golden Beretta 93R, a gold-plated Beretta 93 with burst mode, including a golden stock. Crack off a couple in the Beretta Museum. <laughs> Best negligent discharge ever. Did you the see the engraving on this? You're kidding me. Look at that. That is wild. It has this intricate engraving as well. Gaddafi's full name engraved on the slide. This is truly a priceless gun, perhaps one of the most valuable in Beretta's entire collection, not just because it's full auto, not just because of the engraving and not just because it's made out of frickin' gold, but because it belonged to Big Mo himself, one of the most opulent and notorious despots of the 20th century. We have a ton of content still from Beretta. We were there in April and May and we took probably a terabyte of videos. There are plenty of videos still coming from Italy. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you stay tuned to TFB TV, but we're just glad you're watching. Take care.